Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting us to, to give uh, the talk. We have a lot of uh, a big representative of Facebook here, so find us for any question. So I'm from Facebook, from a Messenger RTC team, and uh, this talk is about the challenges and opportunities of scale. Uh, I will start with uh, talking about uh, the different products that we are supporting, some products uh, internal in Messenger and some other products in Facebook. Uh, I will talk a bit about the scale of Messenger, and then I will give you an overview of uh, the architecture of uh, RTC in Messenger. Then we will talk uh, about some of the challenges uh, that comes with scale and also opportunities. Okay, so hopefully I don't need to uh, introduce you to Messenger. Messenger is this app where you can instantly uh, um, connect with your friends uh, via messaging, uh, video calls, audio calls. Video calls, video chat we support in iOS, Android, and most of the browsers. And uh, beside peer-to-peer -peer calls, two people, two people calls, we are supporting also group calls. Uh, we have two view modes for grid view and dominant speaker view. And we also have all those fun uh, masks and uh, effects on top of the video. Another product that we are supporting is Facebook Live. So Facebook Live lets you broadcast in real time uh, <coughs> video to the public. One of the features of Facebook Live is Live With, where you co-broadcast with a friend. A similar uh, product uh, was just launched globally by uh, Instagram, and we are supporting also some of the infrastructure for them. Uh, Messenger has also integration with uh, Oculus, Oculus VR. So from VR, you can do from, from Oculus, you can do a, a Messenger chat, and this is an example. This is an example where Mark Zuckerberg is chatting with his wife. <laughs> so a little bit about Messenger scale. So in Messenger, we have more than 1.3 billion users every month. 400 million out, out of them are doing voice or video chat every month. We are the second most popular iOS app of all time. Do you know which one is the most popular app of all time on iOS? Facebook, Facebook right. We have more than 1 billion downloads on Android. So let's talk a little bit about the architecture. And so we will start with peer-to-peer, -peer, which is based on WebRTC. So we have two types of connections, signaling and media. Signaling to establish the call and negotiate the conditions of the call and media for actual uh, the transmission of the media streams. And let's start with uh, signaling. So. In Messenger, in order to keep track of the connected devices, we are using uh, Facebook infrastructure, uh, MQTT. MQTT is a public uh, protocol, po connectivity protocol. Uh, and basically, we are using them as a proxy to the devices the, of the end users. So uh, for, for, for signaling, basically, we need to pass a signaling message from A through A's MQTT, MQTT to B's MQTT, and we are doing that using another Facebook infrastructure, which is the routing service. The routing service can, per user, can fetch the active devices for that user and find the right MQTT to pass the message uh, uh, to the right device. So once the call got established, we can start with the uh, media. Usually, it will not be possible to directly pass media between uh, A and B. And this is because users will be behind night, not in uh, firewalls. And then we will use uh, Tone and Stun servers. Uh, in Facebook, we are hosting our own uh, Tone and stun, stun servers. So this is a for two people call. We're also supporting the mode of uh, multi-party, more than two people in the call. And in this case, we are using another Facebook infrastructure, the multi-way service, uh, also known uh, outside of Facebook as SFU. Uh, so you can think about it as a peer-to-peer -peer connection between the multi-way service and each one of the users, A, B, and C. Uh, so the multi-way service basically relay uh, media from one user to all other participants in the call. I will not uh, go deep into the multi-way service in this, in this talk. Hopefully, we'll be invited next time, and we will be able to tell you more about that. So now let's talk about the architecture on the device itself and start with the uh, capture. 
So this is very typical to any RTC app. We have camera, which is uh, hardware dependent. And then we have the component for face tracking and masks and effects. We are using hardware accelerators in order to uh, minimize CPU usage for, for this part. And then just before uh, video encoding, we have some pre-processing uh, step uh, to improve the quality of the video, scaling, denoising. And then we are doing the encoding and passing through the network. Uh, in some cases, we will have more than one encoder. For example, in the case of uh, simulcast, where we will have uh, more than one video streams, each one of the stream will, uh, will have different resolution or bit different bit rate. And then different participants in the call will be able to get different <coughs> streams. And we also, also have this uh, loopback from uh, uh, feedback from uh, bandwidth estimation to be able to uh, dynamically change the bit rate according to the conditions uh, of the network. On the receiver side, on the renderer side, again, very typical to any RTC app. <coughs> we are getting packets from the, from the network, doing a depacketization, and then we have jitter buffer, audio video sync, we are doing video decoding and rendering. Uh, Besides rendering, which is platform dependent, all other components we are trying to share across all pl platforms. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, some of the scale challenges for uh, media. So we all want to have uh, the best uh, media quality for all users. Uh, with scale, this has become a really hard challenge. We need to support different networks, Wi-Fi, cell, 4G, 3G, 2G. Uh, one, one thing that will might, might make sense uh, in great network condition will not make sense for uh, bad network conditions. This is one of our engineers trying to simula simulate in lab uh, low network conditions for one of our features. Another challenge is around the diversity of uh, devices. We need to support a very long tail of uh, Android devices with a variety of qualities. Uh, and again, it is invisible, in invisible to, to test uh, things on hundreds of uh, devices. So this makes uh, the scale problem really hard. A third challenge is around this balance between video quality, battery, and uh, bandwidth. So for different users, uh, different users will value those three in different ways. And they will put themselves on the in this uh, triangle in, in different places. So some users, the, they must care about to have uh, their battery till the end of the day, although they need to do some, some calls during the day. Some users will have a limited uh, data plan, and bandwidth will be the, the thing that they will care most about. And some people are just at home, and uh, video quality is the uh, highest priority for them. So there were, uh, so I, I, I covered some, some of the challenges related to quality at scale. And now I want to talk about the opportunities. And for that, I will uh, go over a specific uh, case study of uh, codec selection. So there are like uh, several options of codecs uh, that we can use uh, for RTC. They all make sense for RTC. Uh, in Messenger, we are supporting H.264, VP8, VP9, and we keep close look into H.265 and uh, AV1. All of them will make sense, but there are several things to consider uh, when we are doing a codec selection. And one of them is whether there is a hardware support for that codec. Uh, but this is not uh, all. Even if there is hardware support, there is this question, what is the quality of that uh, implementation, uh, whether this is reliable or not. Uh, a typical problem that we see with uh, hardware implementation uh, of codecs is that uh, the hardware was designed for uh, capturing video and for local storage on the device. And it was optimized for much higher bit rates than what we are using for RTC. And in those cases, the quality of uh, the hardware encoder might be very low. Beside of that, there is this trade-off again between uh, battery, uh, battery life uh, and quality. So we need to pay attention to both. We, we cannot optimize only for one of them. And, ag and again, it is invisible to manually go and uh, over hundreds of uh, Android devices and try to optimize codecs for all those scenarios. So the approach that we are taking is a data-driven approach. So the way we are doing that, we are collecting lots of data for each call. So data like uh, CPU usage, battery at the beginning of the call and uh, at the end of the call, 
uh, bit rate for uh, encoding, decoding, RTT time, uh, duration of the call, a lot of, uh, a lot of data. And then we conduct several experiments and we can compare the different uh, settings uh, and, and make the decision uh, which setting is the best for, for each scenario. So after we collect this data, we can slice the data by device, network conditions, and uh, some, some other, uh, other options in order to optimize for each scenario. So we are following this uh, common A-B uh, test testing uh, cycle. So basically for each feature or each uh, bug fix that we will have, uh, we will set up an experiment. We will have a, a control group and a test group or several test group. Then we will launch it. Usually we launch it internally uh, for Facebook employees. And then gradually we'll uh, increase the exposure to the public. Once we gather enough uh, data, which is something that we can do pretty quick with uh, the scale uh, of uh, Messenger, uh, we can uh, slice the data and see in what scenarios it will make sense to launch this feature. And then we can make the decision whether we want to ship it for, to a bundle or, or to keep iterating on the feature. So we rely heavily on A-B testing and everything we, 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 will, do, we will test using uh, A-B testing. It really helps us uh, to measure the impact of any change that we are making. Uh, and also sometimes obvious change will have non-obvious effects. So for example, uh, uh, a change that we made in order to improve the quality, we, 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 we might discover that uh, crash rate on some specific Android devices will go up. Uh, and this is something that is almost impossible to discover, discover in lab. There are some challenges with A-B testing around group calls because one party uh, that is on the test might impact the entire uh, call, the overall co quality of the call, and then the challenge to analyze the data is a little bit more complicated. Yeah, so I talked about uh, some of uh, the challenges around diversity, network conditions, devices, and users' preferences. Uh, on the other hand, the opportunities of scale is data-driven decisions, uh, the ability to measure the impact of any change that we are making, uh, which help us focus on the things that matters. Thank you very much.